welcome. I'm your host, Henry Arslanian, and welcome to the Future of Money podcast. My goal with this podcast is very simple. It's to go deep in some of the biggest ideas, trends, and developments we're seeing in the field of crypto, and hopefully empower you with this information, and then let you make your own decision on what their impact can be on the future of money and finance. To do this, I invite each week one of the leading figures of the global crypto community to have a one-on-one conversation amongst crypto aficionados and discuss some of these topics. My guest today is Yifan He, the CEO of Red Day Tech and the Executive Director of the BSN. One thing you may not know about Yifan is that he runs six kilometers every day in the streets of Beijing. And, you know, one of the good things that happened with COVID is actually the air is now pretty clean in Beijing from that perspective. So, Yifan, great to have you with us. Uh, you know, and obviously today we have a very fun uh, uh, show and podcast because we're going to talk about, you know, the BSN network, the blockchain services network, what it means not only for China, not only for the rest of the world, but also the impact on the future of blockchain technology. But before doing that, I think it would be good for our audience and our listeners today if you could kind of give us a bit of background about you from how you started to how you came to fa- fi- uh, founding a Red Date. Okay. Uh- Henry, it's uh, it's uh, really uh, my honor to be here. And uh, uh, to start, actually, I I, I went to uh, United States in 1996, and and uh, the the second year, actually the same year, that was the first time I even you know used the internet for first time. So that was amazing. I think this technology definitely will change the world. So I transferred to the uh, uh, SUNY at the Stony Brook. And, uh, you know, uh, in the second year there, I, I started my own internet company when I couldn't even speak English yet. Okay. So I, I read, uh, raised, uh, you know, mil- millions of dollars. At that time, if you have a website, you can talk. No, no matter what language it is, you can raise money. So I raised, uh, you know, uh, some million dollars and, and build a Chinese portal. So to serve Chinese people in the United States, so they basically can buy, even can buy the Chinese grocery in 1998, you know, from my website and pay with credit cards. So uh, that that actually started my whole career. So I'm an entrepreneur from start. So uh, after the bubble burst, uh, then I returned to uh, school and uh, got my MBA from MIT. And uh, immediately after that, I returned to China because everything move, moved very, very fast, uh, grow very, very fast in China. There's, you know, there were tons of opportunities. So I came back and, uh, because, you know, I raised the money and also did the reverse, uh, you know, uh, merge, you know, with my company in the United States. So I, I have some connections, uh, in the, you know, uh, investment community. So I was uh, handling some projects for the, for, uh, family office from New York in China. That's how I got involved in the, you know, private equity. So from 2006 to 2014, I was full time private equity guy in, in China. So that was the, that time also, it's, it's upset of entrepreneurs. So, but that time really, really gave me a lot of understanding about the Chinese culture, Chinese market, how the Chinese government functions, how the Chinese technology is built, what people like, doesn't like, how the traditional company functions. So got a lot, learned a lot of things. And by 2014, I was kind of, you know, tired of that investment thing. It's, I think it's a little bit too simple. We need, you know, I, I, I needed some challenge. So I, and then I have some friends working uh, in the smart city projects, you know, say, okay, the government really put a lot of attention in smart city since 2014. I say, okay, this is probably an area I, I really want to go. So that's when I found it. Right date. And, and, but, but, but the team, the technical team is not, uh, since then, I actually, before that, actually, uh, I, I moved all the team from a small IT company I invested personally to Right Date. So the, the team already worked together like, uh, almost 14 years. So it's, uh, it's a very good team here. So that's how, uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, I founded the Right Date. At the beginning, it was Smart City project, working with local government, you know, a lot of headaches there and, and, uh, you know, building, uh, but at that time, I also, uh, 
you know, personal, I don't really want to build uh, applications. I always build infrastructure. <laughs> so at that time, the, the platform we build is basically integrating all the data here and provide universal APIs to other applications and websites so they can access a lot government-related data through one set of APIs. So it me similar to BSN today. <laughs> so that's how everything started, yeah. So actually, I think we're going to definitely come back on the topic of smart city uh, later on. But I want to talk about the BSN network. I think for a lot of our listeners, uh, you know, there's a lot of obviously questions people have. What is this blockchain-based service network? What is BSN? Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of media coverage around the topic, but I think not a lot of people know what is BSN. So I think if you can it'd be good, uh, you find if you can walk us through what is the BSN network, what does it do, and what it, what it kind of the, the upside and what where it can lead. Okay, uh, so uh, this will be a long conversation. Okay, uh, first uh, I want to uh, uh, emphasize one thing is uh, my understanding of blockchain technology. Uh, 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 that really, really is a fundamental reason uh, I want to build something like a BSN. Uh, because, you know, w- when we talk about blockchain technology, some, some people say, okay, it's a permission chain, public chain, crypto. From my perspective, all the, all those things is application. So what's the fundamental technology? Personally, I think it's the broadcasting way to transmit data. Okay, it's, it's, it's actually still the human behavior. I mean, when, 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 when people, you know, uh, communicate with each other, it involves like 10 people, how you, how you communicate. There's two ways, passing the, the, the data on, okay? It's a, like a linear transmission. Okay. Go through 10 people. You can pass into two, then they pass it on. In other, in other way, it's much more efficient. Put everybody in one room, talk at the same time, solve problems immediately. So then we move on to the phone, telephones, you know, telephones still connecting two people. But, uh, but, but remember, if you have like 10, 10 people, you need a phone to communicate. It takes the public, you know, feedback, a feedback, a feedback, thousands of phones to put everybody on the same page. Then next, conference call. Then everybody talk, passing, broadcasting data, everybody understand, boom. So uh, 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 my understanding of the internet actually build based on the point-to-point transmission. So then, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, one connect to another one, connect to another one, then form the internet. So this is basically still in the regular telephone area of internet. So, so how to make uh, uh, all the IT systems communicate much faster? So it's the same logic with the human communication and the phone to conference call. So we need to change the linear transmission, add one more layer to enable multiple IT systems to communicate in a broadcasting way. So that's the fundamental belief I have, which means in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, there will be a layer on top of BSN to like, uh, uh, because right now you think of the internet, if you call from one IT system to another one, let's say use uh, uh, HTTP protocol, only one to one, okay? We don't have protocol, we can easily connect 10 IT system from, from a, a virtual communication network and, uh, and broadcasting data. I mean, for public chains, cryptos, they actually build on this, you know, build a consensus between all IT systems, then build, uh, you know, so some, you know, on top of that. So, uh, personal, I think uh, uh, what the great thing about the blockchain technology is this new way to communicate. So that's actually what we're trying to build. Uh, one more layer on top of internet to really, really in- enable a much more efficient new transmission uh, technology. So, uh, so then, uh, 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 then uh, how we start, you know, back in 2018, how we want to do this. Then we first we need to uh, like the blockchain technology much much easier to be accessed. You know, which means uh, a high school uh, high school students they can access and and try different ways to build application based on this kind of communication technology. That's why we actually you know decided let's integrate everything. So so first uh, I want to say is the BSN is an integrator. So, so there's a, a three layers we integrate. The first layer is we integrate all the cloud resources. We basically by, by placing a virtual data center on each cloud and, and link all the 
a virtual data center form a network. So, but we, the second layer is within those virtual data center, we integrate all the blockchain technology, permission, you know, public chain, in, uh, interoperability, oracles, and put them in one virtual data. Center. So for people to access through one gateway, they can access all the technology. They can build their private chains. They can access public chains. They can make interoperability much easier to achieve within this environment. And the third layer is uh, BSN, we don't serve any user. We actually serve, we call portals. We actually provide APIs to all the websites. They build front end, serve their end user. They keep all the personal data and we just provide the capabilities and the infrastructure to them. So this is basically the, the basic structure of BSN. Yeah. So I think it's very interesting you find what you just mentioned because I think there was a lot of misconception. People often thought, oh, BSN is a new blockchain. Uh, it's a new network. But actually what it is, it's really kind of these intermediary if you want and pretty much any public blockchain or private blockchain can come and plug in and actually build on top of it so i think it's very interesting on that perspective i just want to touch on two things you mentioned ifan you mentioned that one of one of the challenges we have today with blockchain technology is cost mm. that is one thing you're, you're trying to approach and second is interoperability yeah. uh, which as you mentioned like a lot of these elements to come to, the, to be able to interact together uh, this becomes quite important. Uh, do you believe that uh, a network like the BSN network will solve these two challenges of cost and interoperability and actually that will benefit China as it leaps forward uh, with kind of innovation at a country level? Okay. Uh, those two things actually is, is a fundamental problem. I mean, even for mankind, you know, for us to communicate, we can always make it better. So there's no way to solve them, but we can make them better. So, by building BSN, we actually integrate all the cloud resources and put all the uh, blockchain technology ready on BSN. So you don't need to build your environment. You can just access to BSN and use whatever technology you want. So that actually, for example, in China, if you build a, a, a private chain, three-peer fabric on any major cloud, it costs you 100,000 RMB each year. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but the on BSN in China, 200 RMB per month. So, uh, which means any students can plug in and learn how to use blockchain technology. I think this is major, okay, because that's just like a crypto, right? You get more in people involved in trading, then the price goes up. So, we get more people involved in testing the technology, then it's much easier for IT system to adopt them. And the second one for interoperability, right now, from my perspective, because we know all the chains, okay, all the chains, all the technology, we integrate all of them. No mature interoperability technology so far until today, not, not even today. So that's why, but within BSN, it's easier because it's, 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 it's a closed environment. We actually assign like IP addresses to different chains, smart contracts, gateways, you know, portals. Uh, data centers, so they e much easier to locate each other, <laughs> like internet, right? You want to find that you, you need to have a, you know, IP address system. So then we, but, but we don't actually right now build the uh, interoperability technology. We still integrate them. Now we integrate the, from Cosmos and the Poly network. So we, we actually deploy their technology to serve underneath all the chains, you know, you know become a common protocol. You know. Uh, absolutely. I think it's, just, it's a very interesting point. And I think in your white paper, you even give the analogy of a well. You say everybody in their backyard, we can drill a well and get some water or we have a public water system for, this, for the city. And of course, that makes it cheaper, better, more accessible for everybody. And I think that's what, in a way, what you're doing here with the BSN network. Uh, one question I want to ask you, Johan, you found on this one is obviously... Um, there's the, the, I think for a lot of our viewers, uh, listeners who may not be familiar, let's say in China right now, there's a big firewall of China for the internet, right? A lot of the applications that people are familiar with, with the West actually do not work in China and, and, and vice versa. From your perspective right now, when we look at the BTBSN network, there is one for mainland China and there's going to be one for the rest of the world. Is that correct? Uh, actually, it's uh, 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 how we want to build the BSN is still one network. It's just like internet. There's one internet, but uh, uh, for the internet inside China, there's uh, different regulations, agencies to govern that. And the same internet, when it reach 
uh, United States, there's an agency and different laws and uh, 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 regulation around that. So it's, but it's still one internet. So we want to build the BSN also into this. It's, uh, first, no one owns BSN. You know, someone owns the virtual data center, someone owns the portal, someone owns this application, this shit. Just like internet, no one owns internet. It act, actually consists of all the data centers, websites, software, you know, whatever, put them all together. So same thing, BSN is one BSN. But inside China, there's a regulation, right? For example, actually legally, you cannot even run a public chain nodes in China because it's IT system doing services to the end user and you cannot do KYC on public chain and then you cannot delay anything. It's against the, the regulation. That's why for, for the BSN China, you cannot legally to install public chain nodes and provide public chain services access. So because the regulation is not wrong, it's just the regulation. So, but outside China, we can, uh, for the, all the data centers outside China, we can, you know, implement public chain access. So you can, you know, at the same time, you can access to public chain. It's fine. But, uh, but uh, for example, if we reach another country, for example, when we reach Europe, there's, uh, you know, laws to govern the personal data, then the portals in the Europe will be managed data totally different than the data portal in Japan. So, so th this is just like internet. Where you are, follow, you know. The rules, the local compliance. rules. Yeah, the rules, yeah. Actually, on this point, if I, so if we think about the impact this is going to have, let, I mean, I'm thinking very practically here. With the BSN network, this means that any company in China, I mean, you mentioned before students, but it can be any company, a student, any organization, any, 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 anybody basically has access to literally the benefits of blockchain technology in a way that is very efficient and actually very cost effective as well. What do you think the impact this could have? Do you think this is going to be game changing and transformative for the country? And what are some of the use cases you see will take place very, uh, in the short term? Okay, uh, first, uh, this one, I mean, this kind of t fundamental uh, 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 technology won't really bring, you know, dramatic change. It always goes slow. I mean, even for internet. I, I mean, it changed our, our life for, you know, the mankind. But it, it take like, uh, for example, until 2005 or almost 2010, the, in China, you know, the, the, the government and the banks begin to offer internet based services. You know, it takes them like 20 years to even use that. So right now, what we're doing here is just get more people to try the technology. So, I mean, I mean, and, and when you try this, then you will begin say, okay, just like I was in the 1996, you know, internet is good. This is interesting. This will change the world. Let me build some website and, and, and try. So <laughs> I want more people to try this technology. And then you can think really, really fundamentally to say, okay, then I can build application to connect those five IT systems and make them transaction much more efficient, much fa faster and, 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 and more powerful. So let me, let me try this. So, so this is actually the beginning of, you know, some, you know, but it will take time. It will take probably next five years, 10 years, 15 years. You know, right now, all the crypto, no, mat no matter how crazy it is, it's just one single application based on <laughs> this kind of technology. So it's, it's fun, just like email, right? In the beginning of internet, email is so popular, but uh, we don't use, you know, the, the email is not everything. We need to find ways to innovate and, and, and build e-commerce, but build, uh, you know, the, the messaging app, you know, phones, you know, so, so it's, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but right now, because uh, uh, BSN already been uh, uh, actually widely uh, used, uh, not widely, but it's uh, there's many users on BSN, so we can see actually half of them is testing app. We can see, you know, some some small company is testing the technology, you know, uh, using Fabric for one month, switch to another framework, and building same application and the changing the, you know, we don't know how they change, but they update their smart contract all the time. So you can see they are testing this. This is really good, uh, and we even build a test net, which means you don't even need to spend the two hundred RMB per month. You can even test your smart contract. So and. Uh, the government uh, in China, one thing is the government really invests a lot into blockchain technology. 
So we, we actually do some commercial deployments. We call private BSN, private BSN to the government internet and charge some money. Okay, that's our income. Oh, now we, uh, for Hainan government, Changsha government, actually we see like dozens of applications already in use. You know, one popular one, just build a chain to communicate data between different agencies. Because in yep. China, there's always a, a dilemma for, for different agencies to, to, to transmit data. Why? Who gave who? <laughs> the, you know, tax bureau gave to the commercial bureau. No, you gave to me. Build a chain, share data with permission control. It's much easier. So that's, that's one major, major application inside government yeah. system. I, I can imagine that. Imagine on that point. I mean, what is? Can you share with us some data on usage right now? I mean, what what can you share? I know it's obviously early state, early days, but to give you an idea of our listeners, right now we have uh, over uh, uh, 20, twenty five thousand uh, active uh, developers uh, in video and small companies, and also we uh, we have uh, I can only say more than two thousand. Uh, different private chains is running, okay, uh, on, uh, on BSN with uh, different, uh, you know, uh, scenarios, business scenarios, everything. Also, we deployed seven private BSN across China in past four months, actually, all within the uh, government uh, uh, system. And then we can see user cases there, you know, it's uh, because the private BSN also helps the government's you know, tech, uh, tech support, uh, support team, they actually can, can really test uh, the blockchain technology for the government and build application for them. I actually, you know, when we deploy private BSN, we don't actually do applications. It's uh, still the local company support the government. Actually, they have one more tool to build uh, even better applications for the, for the government. And how did this happen? I mean, the early days, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious because obviously there was a couple of, of founding companies. Obviously, there was Red Date, the company you're involved in. There was China Union Pay, China Mobile, and obviously the State Information Center. How did this all come together? Because it's obviously quite a bold, <laughs> innovative idea. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, 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 when, I, uh, uh, when Red Date is working on the Smart City project, we, uh, we, uh, we were a partner to China Mobile and China Union Pay. So we have a good relationship with them. And when I came up with the idea, the first company I talked to is China Mobile. They understand networking a lot. They are built, they, they have the biggest, uh, you know, mobile network in the world. They understand networking. Then I talked to China Union Pay. They understand crypto and the blockchain very well because they follow that. They follow that as a payment company. So immediately we think, okay, if we go this deep for this kind of data transmitting, New protocol, new way to transmit, and uh, where is the global infrastructure? Now, then it immediately become opportunity. So, but but when we uh, two months into this, we realize this is this will become an infrastructure in China. Infrastructure you have to working with government. <laughs> so so that's why uh, we we actually talk to uh, uh uh you know basically uh, uh NRDC so so they really like the idea and uh, refer us to the state information center uh, which is a, a bureau level uh, uh agency under the NRDC. So so uh, and and uh, the state information center actually in charge of the entire government networking. So they they are also expert in networking. <laughs> so that's why we Head off immediately. Opportunity. Let's build this. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. I think the power of this is quite quite innovative. I mean, uh, two things I want to ask you. First of all, from a, a government perspective, right? I mean, obviously, uh, on the BSN network, it, it needs to follow the laws of the country where it is, which is in China, right? So I presume, yeah. in theory, um, the transactions that are being made on that, the government has access to it. And obviously, there's nothing, like you said, that is permissionless on it, right? So there's always, from a data privacy perspective, in theory, uh, authorities, as long as it's, it's in, within the law, are able to access the information. Is that correct? Uh, actually, uh, because uh, in China, is all permission. But, uh, uh, I mean, for blockchain, you can actually, with your private keys, you can actually encrypt everything. So, so uh, if you encrypt everything, there's no one can access. <laughs> I mean, even you go through our gateway, we, I mean, on the gateway, we couldn't even see the data. So, so, uh, uh, follow our user menu, no one can access your data. But if you do something wrong, we find out against the, the law, we will suspend your account and report you to authority. If authority find out you do something wrong, they inform us, we we cannot see your data, but we can 
you know, delay the delay the application, you know, stop you for accessing the gateway. So that's so this means, I mean, if we think about it in the in the foreseeable future in China, literally access to b blockchain technology will be made very available and very actually cost effective. And I and, and in a way, uh, like you used before, the email example or the e-commerce example, this may enable new industries, this may enable new businesses that we probably Right now, we even even thought about right, but it's now at least it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be we can empower it from that perspective. If you are a betting man, and you look in the future, you know what do you think is the uh, the, the 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 thing you would want to see as uh, BSN network is becoming implemented in China? Uh, actually, not only China, because I have my vision of future internet. So uh, uh, let me quickly go through this. Uh, first, I think uh, each of uh, our individual, our company, or even our dogs will have their own virtual data center on the cloud. And our phone, our computer, they don't access to internet anymore. When you open the phone, go to our virtual data center first. So it become a clan. It's no longer have computing power. Everything will be computed on our data, data center. Uh, it will host our all digital assets. And when we're visiting website, it become our virtual data center, connect to the website's data center, fetch an uh, application back to our environment, run it, and, uh, and, uh, and we can use their knowledge, you know, to feed in data, get a result, push back, finish the transaction. So it should be like this. And the, the virtual data center on PSN, in three years, we will issue a personal version. <laughs> so <laughs> right there, if you ask me 20 years, what will they become? We want to become the wonder of operating system for the future personal data centers. That's <laughs> uh, quite interesting, actually, model that everybody will have its own kind of, you know, that's, uh, that, makes it, that makes it very, very interesting. It's a very different model than what we have today. And I, I think you're right. And we argue it definitely could be more effective than what we have today, yeah. frankly. And, and you protect your data and your asset the best way it is. And, and, and also, when you join a business scenario, you involve a broadcasting way with one million other data centers, then it become a public chain-like application. Then you can just build a, a small three, three data center virtual broadcasting chain with your mom's data center, your father's data center, you can, you know, transmit data wherever you want. So this is, should be, and when I send a, 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 a email, it should be from my data center, you encrypt it in a way only the receiver can decrypt. So make everything the most secure and, and also this virtual data center will definitely be decentralized stored. So any, any physical data center went down, it doesn't affect Yo, so you, you just imagine how many industries will be built around this. And it could, could be quite game changing. Uh, and also buy stock from those cloud services because the cloud will be 1,000 times bigger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, I, but actually, you know, you find it's very interesting because I remember when I was reading the white paper of the BSN network, right? Obviously, the, it's very interesting because in your case, it's not as if you're not really competing with anybody. All the big cloud providers, you know, the AWS, Azure, everybody is involved in it. All the big blockchain networks, the permissioned or permissionless ones, everybody is involved in it as well. You're kind of, in a way, what BSN does is it brings everybody together in, in, a, in a logic where the, the, you know, the sum of all the different parts is bigger, you know, than, than the, the parts themselves. I think, I think, I think, which is very, very interesting on that perspective. And the question I want to ask you as well, you find is on the global side. Right now, let's say BSN obviously is going to start operating in China, and let's say we talk about the global expansion. To what extent you you are you worried or concerned that geopolitics uh, can, can can come into play? You know, as we know, there's a lot of anti-China uh, pressure right now around the world. To what extent do you think that can have an impact on the BSN's expansion around the world? I mean, uh, right now, uh, uh, right now, when, uh, we already expand to the international market. So basically, the uh, the strategy for the public BSN basically is setting up portals in each country. So they manage their own user, provide the building system, provide the user management system. So do their own business. We, and they even can build their own virtual data center. So everything is within their ecosystem. We just provide the infrastructure. So that's the. But there's no way we can go to U.S. Because, you know, it's from China. Nobody trusts, even Europe. Okay. So we, we start with a small country, but we, we actually understand that. Okay. That's a fact. There's nothing we can do, but what we can do is make our 
technology much more transparent and open. So that's why actually in the next month we're setting up a foundation in Singapore. There will be some, you know, uh, uh, a dozen tech companies uh, will join. And uh, next month we open source BSN codes to all the partners. So they have access to BSN and we will begin to develop BSN together. So some company will build a zero knowledge component. Some company will build an auditing, you know, component to audit all the smart contracts. So, so, uh, I mean, BSN will become, uh, you know, we, we hope the BSN foundation become uh, something like a Linux foundation. So, so, and, and, uh, and in two years after the foundation built, establishment, we will open source everything to public. So everybody can build their own virtual data center. Everybody can build their own portal. You can build anything you want. Everything is open source. Go through the codes, see what happens. Yeah. That's super exciting. And what about, I guess, uh, one uh, related question. What would be the interaction of the BSN network with the ECNY uh, digital yuan efforts going on right now with the PBOC? Uh, first, uh, it's uh, uh, BSN is the infrastructure. You can build any application on top of it. If it's cheaper, it's more secure, and it's more efficient. So eventually, we believe some people will build uh, applications to circulate digital currency, no, ma no matter it's, it's, uh, it's stable coin, central bank digital currency, as long as the regulation allows, then uh, that's why we become ready, okay, ready for something like that to happen in the next several years. Okay. I interesting. So there'll be, there'll be some interaction with them. And what about other cryptocurrencies? I guess from that perspective, yes, anybody can come and build on top of, uh, of the BSN network. But I guess for a lot of their listeners from around the world who are listening to this, uh, should we assume that the BSN network will not operate with a cryptocurrency? It'll be potentially ECNY, but that's it. The infrastructure will be operating. There'll be no, uh, especially for the permissionless chains are coming on board. Uh, there'll be no cryptocurrency on the on the BSN network. Is that uh, correct? Uh, no, actually, what we uh, what we provide to the public chain is basically a set of nodes for people to access much easier and in a very stable environment. We have nothing to do with the application on top of it. So, so you build uh, the, the 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 cryptocurrency, you build the, the the DeFi, anything is on the chain. Nothing to do with us because we consider each public chain is an application. So to handle a certain business scenarios. In a way here, what you're doing, you find you're building the kind of the internet, right? And whatever people want to build on top of it, great. But you are kind of the infrastructure to building the new internet uh, from, from that side. Uh, and one other question as well is, obviously, what the BSN network and what's being built right now, let's say starting in China, is quite innovative and pretty forward looking. Do you Have you seen other countries try to replicate what China is doing with a BSN network? Or you think it's not possible, or it's uh, we're still a long way from seeing that in other countries? Um, yeah, there's, uh, uh, I mean, the business model, the, the, this kind of model is a little bit tricky. First, uh, all the major ones, they don't usually do this, okay? Because, you know, let's use some Chinese example, Ali. They only build everything within their ecosystem. They never sell Tencent Claw or Baidu Claw on their network. So that's why they always... All those big players, they're working within their ecosystem. BSN come in, integrate everybody, connecting everybody. So, 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 I mean, I mean, AWS, they definitely won't come up with a solution to connect, uh, you know, Microsoft and Google. The, it, it's not going to happen. But uh, for the small player, uh, uh, players, it's really hard for them to pull this off. So we're actually in a pretty unique <laughs> position here. Uh, so, so, so that's why, you know, many people even say in, in, at least in China, there's no competitors to BSN. Correct. Yeah. No, I, I definitely, I think it's, uh, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see how, uh, how it expands, but I think you're right for other countries can be challenging. Can you also give us an idea of a size, obviously with BSN, how many people are working on BSN right now in China? Like how big is the team? I mean, to give an idea of a sale for other countries, you want to replicate this. How many people does it take to, to build a BSN network for a big country like China <laughs> and what would be equivalent for a smaller country? Uh, I mean, uh, copying BSN doesn't... Uh, I mean, wait for our open source. You don't need a copy. You can use that for free. <laughs> okay, wait two years. You'll you get everything. And uh, now already we have one, 150 people 
So a small team, small team. But because, like I said, everybody build part of BSN, like China Mobile, they actually supply a lot of cloud resources that, that involve a lot of people, right? Like uh, all the all the governments and the tech company who are building application on BSN, it involve a lot of people. So this is, you know, a lot of people involved to build BSN. But we provide the fundamental software, you know, for the virtual data center, for the portal. A empowerment platform for portal to access, you know, this kind of yeah. so so my last question before we move on to fire round question, what is your biggest challenge you think with the BSN network? What is the biggest challenge the BSN network will face, you think, over the coming years? Uh right now, geopolitical conflicts. Because it stop the many people who are really interested by working with us because they think this is from China. That's why we really need open source as soon as possible, get more people involved to build this together. So that's that's the, the biggest challenge here. Well, it's interesting how geopolitics has uh, comes and plays a role even in the field of uh, blockchain infrastructure. Yeah. Very, very interesting yeah. from that perspective. Okay, um, uh, Yvonne, that was very, very, very interesting. I think one, one question as well. Uh, is um, when do you think the, the BSN network will be live? Like, I mean, there's obviously you're talking about testnet, but when do you think all the features will be fully functional uh, and everything will be available to the public? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, already here. So so it's a BSN based IO for international BSN based dot com uh, for China, and in three days we f- we will launch code China Coda network. We integrate the Coda into into China, uh, China BSN, so you can actually test the Coda programming, you know, developing for free for next six months. Okay. Uh, and also we integrate the uh, uh, Hyperledger Bensu by end of this month. So in three days, we launch Hyperledger uh, Bensu on, uh, on BSN. So you, you can build a Bensu network uh, by your own. So, and uh, also uh, in three months, we will uh, uh, launch a DID, BSN DID. So you, no matter what application is, you can call our DID APIs and, uh, you know, basically, Build a universal DID system on BS. And so we're adding components one by one. But we hope we get more partners to build those together with us. We don't want to build those things. Okay. We, <laughs> please, Absolutely. if you listen to this and, and, and really interested, contact us. Okay. We, let's build it. So anybody together. listening who wants to participate in the BSN network, you know, you can go, you can go reach out. Actually, on that note, how can we find you? I mean, before we want to fire on question, how can people find you? Uh, what, what, obviously there's the, there's a BSN website, but what is the best way for people to get in touch and want to get involved with the blockchain based service network? Uh, search, uh, search us uh, on the LinkedIn and the Twitter. I think LinkedIn, you can search my name and pop up. So you can add me. Yeah, exactly. and, uh, you know, I love to chat with different people. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you found before we, we leave out, we're going to do famous bell is back and we'll do some fire round quick questions. Uh, I'll ask you and then we'll, we'll, we'll go through them very quickly. So I want one or two word answers to some of these questions. We'll, we'll I'll, be, I'll be asking. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. So Yifan, if you can go back to university today, what is the one course you take you wish you had taken when you were younger? I will drop school. I don't take any uh, courses. I drop school. (laughs) 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 uh, Some school is just wasting time. (laughs) It's a waste of time. It's good. But hey, go. Young people, don't listen to this. But hey, go. Wise words from Yifan on that side. Second question. (laughs) What do you think is the biggest misconception people have about China? Biggest misconception about China? It's very modern. Yeah, very, very good point. Very good point. What is your favorite thing to do in Beijing? Restaurants. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I used to live in, in Beijing in 2005, 2006. I have to say the restaurant scene right now has, has been absolutely incredible. Uh, one question, uh, Ifan, as well. If you are not right now in the blockchain space, what other industry you would be involved in? I will be a professor. I drop out of school, but I won't be a professor. <laughs> <laughs> what would you teach? Out of curiosity. Sociology and the psychology. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you could have lunch, you could have lunch with one person, dead or alive, one person you could have lunch with, who would that person be? My wife. Hey, who's, that? who's that? My wife, alive. My w- okay. <laughs> What a romantic man here. <laughs> Hope your wife will be listening to this podcast, you know. Okay. Here we go. And you imagine the choice of everybody in the world, you choose your wife. So here we go. 
Uh, another one for you, Yifan. Uh, you have the choice today to launch a new uh, startup. You have the choice between these founders, Jack Ma, Mark Zuckerberg, Lee Cashing, and Elon Musk. Who do you choose? Elon Musk. Okay. And why I, is I like that? him. Uh, I admire him. Okay. He's the one, you know, really see into the future. You know, that's the guy, this kind of guy we need. Yeah, especially that he went to space as well right now. Yes. Another question as well for you as well is, uh, what is it, the, 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 your favorite drink? If you there's one drink you love, what is it? Water. <laughs> Pure water. <laughs> Hey, go well with your professor Kerr as well from that perspective, you know. <laughs> and the last question, and uh, I know we'll, we'll to finish it off today. Uh, it was great to having you fun on that perspective, uh, you know, uh, that, to, to have it with us. When you're not working on the BSN network, what are you doing? What is your favorite hobby when you're not working on the BSN network? Playing video games. <laughs> Vigo, Vigo, which one? What is your favorite one? Uh, right now, I don't have time to play, but uh, I play the almost all the video games you, you can imagine from 1982, okay, in China. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you again for sharing with the, about the blockchain, uh, you know, uh, the BSN network with, with, with our viewers today. Uh, it was great having you on board. And I think I'm a, this is a development we are following very, very closely what is happening with the BSN network. So thank you very much again to being with us. Our guest today was Yifan He, the CEO of Red Day Tech and the executive director of the BSN. Thank you very much, Yifan. Thanks for being with us thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.